Good morning and welcome to Shiloh. It's good to come to the house of the Lord as we praise the name of God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that looks over us all. Let's go to the good word in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can come to your house in Shiloh. Ask your blessings upon us as we sing these good songs. Read for the words of your good book and we pray for a message this morning. We pray for Miss Tommy, the saint of my church. Please keep her upright and going. We pray for all those that are helping our little church grow, for Becky and Roxanne and Tristan and Dancy and Brittany and Daniel, and for the time that we have with our shoulders to the plow. Thank you for those that come before us and let all those that come after us find us faithful. We pray for those that are dealing with the tropical storm to our south in Texas and Louisiana. Help them, keep them the floodwaters away. We pray for the folks dealing with the wildfires in New Mexico. And Lord, we just look to you to pray for healing and hope and understanding. They would turn towards you and look to you, our Father, our Daddy in Heaven who loves us no matter what. And thankful for the grace and love of your Son, Jesus Christ. We give you this time and this place, and we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
For our scripture reading this morning, we're going to the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 27 through 30. John 10, 27 through 30. Listen and hear the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and shall any man be able to pluck them out of my hand. And my Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Praise be the Lord, our God, for these words. Amen. Heavenly Father, dear God, we thank you for these words. These words of affirmation, these words of comfort, confirmation that we are Jesus' sheep. He is our good shepherd. And what he does is in line with the Father. That the Father loves us so much he sent his son Jesus. Let us recognize this and see this in all that we do. And know that we are in the Father's hands because the Son gave his life for us. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Caring not my lot was gross
For our message this morning, we're going to go to the Gospel of John, John chapter 10, starting with verse 29 and 30. In the passages prior to this, Jesus spoke of him being the good shepherd, the good shepherd that laid down his life for the sheep that the Father gave to him, that there were sheep that had wandered off and he was going to bring them back, and they were even sheep that were not of his flock that he was going to bring in, and there was going to be one big pen and we were all we're going to be in it. And Jesus tells them, My Father which gave them me, which is the sheep, is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my hand. And I and my Father are one. These should be words of comfort. These should be words of affirmation. These should be words of a guarantee saying that we have a place with Jesus Christ. That he will not let us go. That the good shepherd is out there looking out for us. And will feed us and comfort us and nurture us in the way that we need to be, not the way that we won't. But the way that we need to be, he will provide the green grass, the manna, the food. Yet it often comes down to a matter of perspective. Oftentimes we don't recognize what God is doing in our lives and God is doing all around us. And the grace of Jesus Christ that keeps us alive instead of letting us pass on. The promise of a new day, the promise of a new life, the promise to do things differently, that our sins are forgiven, and that we can love instead of hate. Yet often we hold on to the things that hold us back. We hold on to sin and addiction and temptation. When the devil props us up and says, you don't need the Lord. And when he comes around, start picking up stones. Start chunking them at him. The very religious leaders at the time, when Jesus said the words, I and my Father are one, they picked up stones and wanted to stone him. And he looks at them and says, Which of my good works do you stone me for? Is it for me raising people from the dead, feeding the 5,000, walking on water? Letting people walk that never walked before. Let the blind could see, the deaf can hear. Demons are cast out. That he gave the words of life. And they looked at him and says, We're not just going to stone you for the words that you the good works that you did. It's for the words that you say, that you spoke blasphemy, that you said you were God. We get upset about what God is in our lives. The world, the devil tells us we don't need him. Yet he hears he's providing you every breath that you take, every heartbeat that you have. It is a miracle. Yes, our old bodies wear out. They're not the way we were. Never will be. Each day we live is another day that we're close to dying, but it's also another day that we're close to living. Do we recognize and have the perspective to recognize that God does love us? And even then, Jesus looked at the folks back then and said, If you don't believe in me, believe on the works that you see, the things that you see, so that you know that I am in the Father and that he is in me. We should look around this world and see the sunset, see the sunrise. We just had the winter solstice. The summer solstice, the longest day of the year. We had this beautiful strawberry moon for the last two nights. We've had sunsets that are gorgeous. And storms that have flooded us, and now it's hot. But what do we do? Instead of praising God for the beauty and His power, oh, it's too hot, it's too wet, it's too muddy. Soon it'll be too dry. Somehow we think we have to have it our way. It's not our way. This ain't McDonald's, this ain't Whataburger. And when we hear that, instead of praising God, we go around picking up stones, filling our pockets full, chunking them at God. I don't want you, I don't need you. And he says, but you are my child. I sent my son to save you. I sent the Holy Spirit to guide you. Perspective. Do we recognize who God the Father is? Do we recognize who Jesus Christ is? And do we recognize the power of the Holy Spirit that keeps us in between the lines when we walk with God and praise the name of Jesus and love each other unconditionally? Or are we turn around and chunking rocks? It's time to empty out the pockets. It's time to be loving God. 
loving Jesus. We don't need to be standing in front of the pearly gates and chunking rocks up there. Up there. That's St. Peter himself, and he's looking over at Jesus. Do you know this old boy? Do you know this person? Do you know this girl? No saddest words ever said, I knew him not. And we're thrown out of heaven. It becomes a two-way trip instead of a one-way trip. Those old rocks, they weigh us down. The inability to see that God loves us. God loves us no matter what. Perspective. The world will tell you the world is terrible. Can't turn on the news without the world telling you it's terrible. Yet I look at her and I say it's still another pretty day in Shiloh. There's a gorgeous sunset that Picasso himself couldn't paint. Yes, it gets hot. Yes, it may burn up. Yes, we may flood. The trees may come down. But you know what? Night turns to day. The sun comes up the next morning. The grass is green for now. The flowers are blooming. The birds are chirping. The cows are happy. And we haven't done the chance to do things right. Perspective. God loves you no matter what. Love Him. Recognize that God and the Son, I and the Father are one. And the Holy Spirit is there to guide you. Recognize it. Praise it. Love it. And see the good things that God has done for you. I say this to you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And let us go forth this day, trusting in the word of Christ, the Father made flesh. In his name go forth. Amen.